Hi, everyone. Uh, Matan, thanks for the intro and for this great session. Um, I'm really happy to be here and have the opportunity to talk to you about our approach to container and Kubernetes security. And I think um, you just heard the network exposure session and the identity and the vulnerabilities. And you will see why to secure containers, we actually need to look at all of these and make sure that they are properly addressed. But there's no better way than starting with a customer story that I really like. So a few months ago, uh, we started this POV with an American pretty large enterprise in the food industry. And, and then and they had a pretty good security team. And when we discussed container security with them, their immediate reaction was, container security? Mm, we don't need that. Like, nobody runs containers in here with full confidence. And then we got to the point in the POV that I know a lot of you are very well familiar with, right? The before and after. And we connected with their environment. And what they saw there was no less than 10,000 containers running across 50 clusters, like 10,000 containers. Can you believe that? Like this huge gap between what they anticipated to see and what they actually saw really captures something. I mean, think about the security team. It's a global operation. It's a large enterprise. And they were really struggling with answering the first question you need to get started with. Are we running containers? Now, I know it sounds like an extreme case, right? Most cases are not, you know, this gap is not that huge. But I mean, if teams are struggling with this basic visibility of what containers are running in their environment, how are they even going to start understanding the actual risks that those containers introduce? But before we answer this, I want to take a short detour on Kubernetes and containers. So is, anyone, is this the first time that anyone hears the term Kubernetes? Can you please raise your hands? Wow, what a, a very strong audience. I might as well ask one of you just to deliver this session instead of me. <laughs> so good, we have a, a good, uh, good baseline. Um, so my first experience with Kubernetes was as a software engineer at Microsoft. And up until that point, I had a pretty vague idea of what containers are and what Kubernetes is and why it's so great. But then my team started to adopt this emerging technology, and we started to shift like, our legacy services to Kubernetes. And this is where I kind of got acquainted with it. And then not too long after that, already as a product manager, I joined a young startup that was all focused on this great technology. It was focused on helping DevOps and developers to make the best out of Kubernetes and troubleshoot issues with Kubernetes. And this technology has become like the de facto way of running containerized environments. And uh, more and more teams and developer teams are actually adopting it. And what's really interesting is that since I've joined Wiz, I realized that while developers are already mastering this technology, the security teams are not even always aware of it, of containers, of Kubernetes, and I mean, we just saw like the most extreme, extreme example, right, with this American enterprise. But my goal for the next few minutes is to show you exactly why the product that we're building here is what those security, needs, what those security teams need to onboard with this technology and to secure their container and Kubernetes environments. So just like George did, <laughs> 60 seconds on containers and Kubernetes, just so we can have like a shared language, and then we continue. So I'm sure you're all familiar with the term microservices, right? And essentially, microservices are like cloud native applications are based on microservices. And containers are basically where those microservices run. Now, putting it very, very simply, a container consists of a microservice plus everything it needs in order to run. And it's all bundled in this package. And it includes stuff like binaries and libraries and dependencies and stuff like that. But what's really great about this package is that it's lightweight, it's portable, it's very well isolated from other such packages, and it works really fast. And this is fantastic. These are fantastic traits. But in order to really benefit of the potential that containers hold, they need to be managed. And why do they need to be managed? Because let's say I were to run a web server or a service that actually needs to scale, right? And we're talking about scale. Then I need to take care of stuff like 
running those containers across a bunch of different machines and auto-scaling these services and stuff like that. And this is exactly Kubernetes. It's a technology for managing and orchestrating the containers. And basically, this is everything you need to remember from this part. Now, in the past few years, and it's not a secret, Kubernetes has become the, most, the mainstream way for running containerized applications. In fact, according to the Cloud Native Foundation survey, 96% of the organizations are currently either using or evaluating Kubernetes. But what's more interesting than that is that 90% of the Kubernetes users actually leverage the cloud-managed Kubernetes services. And why this is important? Because this means that they mostly run in the cloud. And we'll see in a second why it's super important from a security perspective that Kubernetes mostly runs in the cloud. But just so you get a better sense of what numbers we're talking about, we're talking about 5.6 million developers that are using today Kubernetes. And compared to the year before that, it's 67% more. It's growing really, really, really fast. And by the way, 5.6 million developers, I think it's something about like a third of all the backend engineers. It's like every third developer is using Kubernetes. Now, of course, this also means that when we think about security, the container security market is growing really fast, right? It's currently evaluated at $1.3 billion, and it's expected to grow in an annual rate of 22%. It's a huge, huge market, and it's a great opportunity for Wiz. Now, let's think about the challenges in securing containerized environments. Why is it so hard, especially for security teams, not for developers? First, and I know it almost sounds like a cliche by this point, but visibility. And why visibility is so hard? Because containerized environments are dynamic. They are constantly changing. Dozens of new versions of containers or containers are spun up on a daily basis. So developers constantly deploy new clusters, deploy new containers, and it's the existing tools don't offer what security teams need to understand how this environment actually looks like. This is really the first th thing you need to do. But then after you have visibility, you actually need to understand the specific container-related risks. And I like to think about the risk factors of containers in three different levels. The first one is securing the container itself. And what does it mean, securing the container itself? It means making sure it has no vulnerabilities, making sure that it's not misconfigured to run with too powerful permission on the host that runs it. These are super important to start with. But then you remember that containers don't run on their own, right? They're not like independent in the world. They're actually managed most of the times by Kubernetes. So there are other specific risk factors that relate to Kubernetes that you need to account for. Why? Because Kubernetes does things like manage the network of the containers, manage their permissions in the cluster. And this means that a misconfigured cluster could end up accidentally exposing a container to the internet. Right? This is actually the example that we started with, with, with Raz's talk or granting it admin permissions in the cluster. This could be dangerous. But then we just saw that most of the Kubernetes runs in the cloud, which means there's, there's a third type of risks, and it's the cloud itself. An attacker could compromise a container or a cluster and then use that access to laterally move and compromise other assets in that same cloud environment. Now, how do existing solutions tackle these challenges that we just covered? First of all, most of them are agent-based, right? I'm, it's not a surprise. And as their name implies, they require installing an agent on the running resources. And what does it mean? It means, first of all, these are mostly controlled by the DevOps and not the security teams. But more importantly, it assumes visibility to begin with. And we know visibility is an issue, right? How do I know what are all my running containers? We just we started with a company that didn't know that they had containers in, to start with, right? So this is definitely not suitable. But also, even if I were to have a pretty good agent coverage, that, let's assume that for a second. I have a pretty good agent coverage in my organization. So the existing solutions, they offer a siloed approach. Just like we saw in the cloud, this is also true for containers. They don't look at this important triangle of container risks, 
the Kubernetes risks, and the cloud risks to identify the most critical ones. And this is why, with the existing tools, security teams are challenged to keep up with the pace of developers with new clusters and new containers on a daily basis. But Wiz does this fundamentally different. And how do we do it? So Wiz is first and foremost a container security solution built for the security teams, not only the DevOps teams or the developers. And it puts visibility first, agentless visibility into all the running containers and clusters in my environment, in my cloud-connected environment. So I start with understanding what is the scope of containers I'm standing against. But then, just like we do on the cloud, and you must be familiar with this uh, visual, right? But this is for containers. We identify and we analyze the different risk factors. And I'm really happy to be doing this call after Matika, George, and Matan, right? We need to look at vulnerabilities on the running containers. And we need to look about and to, to identify the effective permissions and the effective exposure of containers and the misconfigurations in the cluster. And all of these need to get cross-correlated to surface the most critical risks because security teams need an understanding where to start at. And finally, and I think it's super important, we offer an operation around container security. An operation means two things. One, making sure that issues are attributed to the right owners, right? We don't just surface issues. We want to make sure that they get to the right hands, to the right application teams, to the right developers. But also, we allow shifting left their prevention. Once you identify the most toxic risks, you shift them left and prevent them earlier on the pipeline with Wiz CLI. So really, three main steps. First, visibility. I know what I'm standing against. Then, I know what the most critical risks are in my, that take into account container risks and Kubernetes risks and cloud risks. And finally, I do an operation around container security. And I think there's no better evidence, <laughs> log for shell, very, um, a very popular uh, slide, um, to why this is the approach that security teams need to secure their container and Kubernetes environments. And let me share a last customer story from log for shell So one of Wizard's customers, uh, it's actually one of their, uh, the CISO of one of Wizard's customers shared the story with us. They had like this network of CISOs during log for shell in which he said that many CISOs shared like their complete frustration in trying to get a grip on the running containers that are actually impacted by log for shell And he basically said, in this network, we were basically the only security team that were effectively able to quickly identify all the running containers in their environment, like, again, visibility, know what I'm standing against, and then which ones are actually vulnerable to Log4Shell. And I'm hoping that in the next Log4Shell, we'll have many more CISOs with an actionable solution to answer such questions. And I think as organizations are realizing that they will deploy more containers and more clusters, we already understand that security teams are realizing that they need to rethink their strategy with container security and establish an effective operation around it. The product that we're building here at Wiz that puts visibility first, identifies the most toxic combinations across container, Kubernetes, and cloud, and then offers an operation-centric approach is exactly what those security teams need. So let's help them do their jobs. Thank you very much.